believe that joining Ebony is only about um, looking for people. Let me go out and look for people. Bring one, bring two, bring three. No, it's not about that. Ebony World is about personal fulfillment. It's about fulfilling purpose. It's about getting and attaining those privileges that are yours by right. And so the first thing we look at is our Ebony World Bill of Rights. Number one, there are about 19 of them. Number one on that list is our right to education and information. Our right to education and information. Every child has a right to education. Every child has a right to education. It's not a privilege. And um, we the Africans have a saying that it takes a village to raise a child. So the education of the child is not the exclusive preserve of the parents. It's everyone's responsibility because our children are our future. As goes the future of our children, so goes the future of our own culture and our own civilization. Therefore, it is the responsibility of government, whoever government is, unquote, quote unquote, to ensure the education of the children. Nigeria today is the headquarters of out of school children. We have over 10.5, 11 million out of school children situation in Nigeria. It is an epidemic that even the government itself has no answer to. And it varies from one region of the country to another. And um, very, very endemic in the north, where we have the Almagiri system. About even here in the south, where we are a little more education inclined, it is still not 100% coverage. And a lot of those who even attend school may have to drop out by reason of um, the lack of um, uh, financial support. And the new government has just come out with a student loan scheme. And if you look at the conditions, the times and conditions, you'll find that um, it's probably easier for a camera to pass through the eye of a needle than for you to assess that loan. Unless, of course, government begins to look and water down the over tight, quote unquote, uh, conditions. Now, in Ebony World, we feel it should be unconditional. It's a right, it's not a privilege. So, we'll come up with a scheme to ensure that every child truly can have access to quality education. We've come up with what we call the Ebony Scholar, which we are running right now. And um, all it takes is a stipend to join and then do a couple of things and then you are assured of education for life irrespective of what tomorrow may bring to us or to our parents or our guardians. Um, we have a right to education and information. That information is so crucial that government has passed the, the Freedom of Information Bill, the FOI Bill, which ensures that we can assess any information that we want. What? Whether or not they even pass it anyway, information is now freely available. I would have also been very, very happy if they have also passed a bill of education where education is free for all our kids that they have a right to access it. Just like we have a right to access information. So information is everywhere, so you have a right to it. And so one of the things we do, therefore, is also to disseminate information through our various uh, platforms on um, what is relevant. For you and how to go about um, your daily business and the adventure of life so you have a right to education but of course you cannot exercise this right to education we don't have the economic power and this is where ebony world comes ebony world vision comes in to bring economic power to everyone so that um i can have education to the extent that i want not limited by virtue of lack of economic um, uh, capabilities. The next, of course, is the right to health and wellness. We have a right to be well. 
it's not just enough to be sick, go to the hospital and get attended and then, you know. That's the sickness industry. And we do not promote that. However, it's inevitable that as we journey through life, once in a while, our engines can have issues, which is our body, and it can become sickly, and therefore we may require a physician's uh, intervention. But it will be nice that we are well and above sickness. So Ebony has also come up with a program to ensure that health is not a privilege, it's also a right. Ordinarily, government should guarantee free health for every citizen, free health. Because it's only a healthy citizen that can make positive contributions to the economic well-being of society. But of course here, mm -mm, we don't have that. So Ebony has also um, intervened by creating a program we call the eHead Plus. Also for a token, you can have um, a cover, almost like a health insurance. But it's more than that because... Um, this is not only for the time of sickness, uh, it is even for your time of wellness to ensure that you live quality life. You, you don't even fall sick. It's best that you don't fall sick and it's cheaper. That's why the, uh, the Chinese will say that um, prevention is better than cure. So we also um, accommodate the financing of prevent, pre preventive medicine and um, supplementation. Um, you know, just to be well. And then if you are by any mishap seek we're also there for you and um, we finance this from your wallet whatever is in your e-wallet e-health wallet and um, in this time of death may we all live long we also partake in the funerary so we also cover you know part of the funeral cost almost like a burial insurance if you if 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 if, 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 if i may say so and then the next of course is the right to economic well-being Maybe we should have started with that, but economic well-being involves, you know, economic activities. So before you can engage in economic activities, you must be educated, you must be informed, and you must be well. So those are that's why those and that's not the number one item on our agenda, on our bill of rights. So right to economic well-being, you have a right to be economically self-sufficient. You know, in this era of uh, mass unemployment rising inflation, foreign exchange uh, risk, and um, political bring garbage, if you like. We, we in mass closure of uh, companies and uh, factories, we are hard-pressed, you know, to make ends meet without resorting to, you know, unsavory um, um, situations. So we believe that every human being should be economically relevant. And this will come through employment or becoming an employer. And we are more interested in people becoming employers. So employers are entrepreneurs. So Ebony World is a community of entrepreneurs, people that are dedicated to creating opportunities for other people. Entrepreneurs are the movers of society. They are the movers of civilization. They are the ones that determine how well, you know, and how fast a society will develop, not government. Government just creates an enabling environment. The future of society is in the hand of entrepreneurs. So Ebony World itself is a community of entrepreneurs who have come together using a social platform to begin to help one another in our entrepreneurial adventure. So to achieve that, we have various programs as well. We have um, packages, you know, that um, help to, to support our economic activities. As an entrepreneur, you require three things. I've said that again and again. You require three things. You require information. You require debt information. It requires capital. And it requires character. Character was what we dealt with extensively before we got to the topic of um, our Bill of Rights. So the capital will come from ebony to the extent that you are able to, to become a worthy leader in our community. Ebony is about leadership. So the better leader you become, the better you are mentoring others to rise in our leadership uh, wrong, the more capital that is you know, dedicated towards pushing your own interest and pushing your business. So we are not just um, um, talking about economic well-being. We are actually 
out working to ensure that every member is economically sound, is economically relevant. And so we have a various packages. Of course, to become a member, you sign up through the Explorer program. It's just 1500 And we still recognize you for doing that by um, giving you some token of appreciation as you also begin to get other people to register. And just by registering people, you can accumulate over 5 million, over 5 million in, in benefits from Ebony World. Now, there are three packages for the entrepreneur, the Navigator, the Range, and the Phantom. Navigator comes in for 10,000, can use to raise over 50 million. The Range comes in at 100,000, can use to raise over um, 450 million. And then the Phantom comes in at 1 million, and can use that to raise over 4 billion. So this we grant to your business as grants and as loans. And the beauty of us is that when we give you a loan, we leave you alone. We don't ask for um, collateral situation. We don't ask for guarantors. We don't ask for you know documentation. You know we don't ask for any of those things. We give you our money based on trust, and then we leave you to run, believing that you run your business in in the best manner that you deem fit, be profitable, and then. The loan part, you return to us, and the grant, you retain in your business. And then, of course, number five is that you have a right to family shelter. You have a right to family shelter. You have a right to own the roof over your head. And that is why in advanced countries, they have a very, very uh, robust mortgage system. But we don't have that here in Nigeria. And so we are also um, insisting that, yes, you have a right to own the roof over your head. But again, you cannot... You cannot you cannot insist on that right without economic power. So that's where Ebony World comes in again with our entrepreneurial packages that empower you economically. And then, um, though we have not commenced that, but that will come as we go along, where Ebony will make real estate also available to members sometime in the future. It's not enough to be a tenant in a house. Your, you, your wife and your children deserve a place they can call home. A place they don't have to run uh, um, helter skelter. A place they don't have to look over their shoulder before they enjoy the facilities. Your wife has a has she will have the privilege of planting a little garden in her compound and begin to you know get some fresh food from the garden and um, eat right. You know all this will come from you owning and having uh, absolute right over your place of abode. Then of course number six, you have a right of say. You have a right of say. You are not just to be seen, you are also to be heard. Okay? Now, but you, nobody will listen to a poor man. That's not the truth. Nobody will listen to you if you don't have economic backup, you don't have financial backup. So, uh, many of us at our family gatherings, whether we are there or not, they just go ahead because really, you know, what are we going to contribute other than just to make noise? But even the smallest person, the youngest person, once he has the economic power, Nothing is, nothing is decided, nothing is um, accepted, nothing is uh, stamped until everybody has heard from him and he has made a contribution. So you have a right of say. You are not just to be seen, you are also to be heard. You have a right to speak your voice. You have a right to, uh, I think beyond there, you are going to also talk about the right to choose. But first, you have a right to say. You have a right to speak your mind. You have a right to be heard. You are, you are a human being as well. You, de you deserve to be heard, you deserve to make your own contribution. But again, you can't insist on this without economic power. Then number seven, you have a right of procreation. You have a right to, to, to bring forth the next generation. But of course, in this environment right now, the way it is, not just here only, and worldwide, if you don't have economic power, <laughs> And you say you want to bring children into the world, you want to bring them into a world of suffering. Many of us are scared. We are scared of that, you know, responsibility because we do not have the economic power. So when people are economically empowered, there are a lot of things that they can readily address in their lives. Okay? So a right to procreation, a right of procreation. And then, number eight, you have a right to your own spirituality. You have a right to your own beliefs, you know. Many of us cannot, you know, stand up for any real convictions. Why? Because we don't have economic power. We are looking who pays the piper that takes the tune. 
Many of us have asked to change our religious affiliation just because of something we should eat. Many are even going to a particular place of worship because of what they can get. So they they are not they are not they are a shadow of themselves. They are not really what they should be. Their relationship with their creator is not what it should be. And then many have also gone into the business of um, of uh, religion for the sake of what they will eat. Not because they believe, not because they are dedicated, not because they are true, you know. So, but when you have, when you are economically empowered, when you are, when you are, when your economic uh, base is solid, you find that you choose your faith by reason of your conviction, not necessity, not convenience, okay? So you have a right to your spirituality. And number nine, you have a right to personal dignity. You have a right to personal dignity. You have a right to be treated as a human being. You have a right to, to be respected. You have a right to, to be honored too. You have a right to dignity. But you can't insist on this if you don't have economic power, by the way. Then number 10, you have a right to live in peace, to enjoy to enjoy the fruits of your labor in peace, you know. You have a right to sleep with your two eyes closed. It's your right, you know. You have a right to, to go where you want to go to. You have a right to enter your house when you want to. You have a right to sleep when you want to sleep. But you can't exercise these rights if you don't have economic power. Somebody is paying your bills. Somebody is paying your salary every month. That person will dictate when you sleep, when you wake up. That person will even dictate when you are sick. That person dictates when you go on break and when you don't go on break. You know, um, by his grace, I'm privileged that um, I am economically free. I will say that I dwell in abundance. I dwell in, in the surplus that the Lord has provided. Therefore, I can be anywhere anytime, sleep, wake, when I want. So you have a right to this peace. But if you don't have economic power, you can't insist, you can't have peace. You understand? So that is that. Then next, of course, is a right to service. You have a right to be served. You have a right to serve. And you have a right to be served. But in this place right now, the only right you have is the right to serve. You don't have, nobody serves you, you know. And you can't insist to be served if you don't have economic power. So that's fundamental. Economic power is a is a is, is you can't negotiate it. You can't negotiate it. Okay. So you have a right to service, a right to serve, and also a right to be served. You know, many of our children have gone for our national youth service. You know, I was just watching the internet the other day. I'm sure many of us have seen that young man who. Um, graduated 13 years ago, has done youth service and all, and for all these years, is unemployed. He's unemployed. And he said, look, what was the point of going to school and going to serve and doing all that when really, really the, the nation itself is not ready to be there for him? And painfully, he set all his certificates on fire. Live on screen. Set all his certificates on fire. So, we have a right of service. A right to serve, yes, and also a right to be served. But you cannot insist on these rights, again, if you are not economically sound. You are not economically empowered. You have a right to think, a right to your thoughts. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. You have a right to your thoughts, freedom of thought. You must be able to think. <laughs> but is he a hungry man that would think? If you are not economically empowered, you can't even think straight. A lot of them can't even think straight. I was just watching, um, what's it called, um, we were getting the reports of the last um, election that happened in Kogi, Imo, and Bayelsa. And I even hear that uh, one person was shot dead, well, I think in Kogi, for ballot uh, snatching. You know? Who are those snatching ballot boxes? Is it the children of those who are economically free? No! It's the children of the downtrodden. You know? They can't think straight because um, the suffering, the hunger in the land is... So you have a right to think. Let nobody begin to think for you and teleguide you. You have a right to be to be a, a, a free thinker, not become a zombie, not become you know a, a tool in the hands of manipulators. Of course, we become very susceptible to manipulated when we do not have economic power. So Ebony World is there to bridge that gap. You have a right to choose. Yes, you have a right of choice, and that really what democracy is about: freedom to choose. But 
Can you exercise that right if you are not economically empowered? When people are selling their votes, they are selling their uh, right to choose for a pittance, for a cup of rice, for 1,000, for 500, for, you know. So we are committed to ensuring that all these rights that are yours for, 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 by right, as yours by right, you can also exercise them as of right. You have a right to your time. Yes, a right to time. I, your time is your life. You have a right to it. So that nobody begins to tell you when to wake up. You know, a lot of people right now, by 4 a.m. they are up and they are running their their skelter. By 5 they are at the bus stop. They are running to work in um, at the island. They get there by 9. They 